today A voice, a chime A chant sublime Of peace on earth Good will
doesn't feel like Christmas until I'm with you. Christmas, everybody. We're so glad that you're here tonight to tune in to the Cloverton Christmas Caroling Caravan. Why don't you sing along wherever you're watching from, in your living room, in your basement, wherever you are. Let's sing together. Here we go. Say the night wind to the little lamb. You see what I see.
Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. So good to be with you wherever you are tonight uh, and, and uh, join with you in this little Christmas special from Cloverton, from our place to your place, and, and so good that you join us tonight. It's going to be a fun night. Hopefully all of your Christmas favorites and maybe some that maybe aren't your favorites, but we'll play them anyways because that's what Christmas music's like. And, you know, in a year like this, uh, with it being 2020 and just everything kind of being kind of chaotic and crazy, we felt like this was important to, to bring a show like this to, to you. And, uh, and so, you know, as we've been thinking about what songs to play for, for, this, uh, for this tour, this little special t uh, tonight, we, we thought, you know, what are some things that have reminded us uh, uh, that, that relate Christmas to 2020? Because 2020 has been crazy. And we came up with a couple of things. One, one of them is this. We think that if 2020 was a Christmas food, it would probably be a uh, fruitcake. And the reason is, is because of this. I think you could throw anything you want to in a fruitcake and it still doesn't taste good. And so, uh, man, I feel like 2020 has kind of been like that. Everything kind of happening and it's still just nobody wants it anymore. The other, the other thing I think that is uh, similar to 2020, it would be uh, a Christmas song, Feliz Navidad. And here's why. Because I think whenever that song starts, just like the year 2020 started, everyone kind of was like, yeah, I kind of like this. And then after a little while, it's just like, no, I don't. I don't like this song anymore. I, I don't want it. Just please shut it off. And so we promise we won't play that one tonight, but we will play some of your favorites hopefully tonight. So uh, what do you say? Let's, let's play some more music. Here we go.
when I'm with you. That would always invite us to be with you. Love is brighter than diamonds. Now I'm with you. Christmas time here in uh, in uh, Cloverton land, and, and hopefully you love it wherever you are too. And, and something that I love about um, Christmas is, is is having kids now. It just reminds me so much of, of growing up. And and uh, man, we we love tradition at my house. We we love putting up the Christmas tree. We love making Christmas cookies. All the things that you probably think of when you think of Christmas traditions, we probably do. And it probably is because growing up, uh, my family did a lot of Christmas things, tradition things, and, and so I'd like to, you know, I'd like to share one of them with you because it just reminds me of Christmas, and, and uh, just like Christmas music kind of reminds me of Christmas every year, it kind of is that nostalgic feel. So every year at Christmas time, on Christmas Eve, we would go outside, we grew up in a small town in western Kansas, and we would, my mom would make a birthday cake, and it would say, happy birthday, Jesus, and, and we'd light a candle and go outside and we'd sing happy birthday to Jesus. And because uh, that's why we celebrate Christmas. It's his birthday. And so we'd go outside and we'd sing this uh, rendition, this stirring rendition of happy birthday to Jesus. And then we would wait and, uh, and wait for that western Kansas wind to blow the candle out on the cake because it's Jesus' birthday. And so uh, sometimes, though, it was pretty still on Christmas Eve night. And we would wait out there a long time. Sometimes the, the breath of God smelled a lot like the breath of my dad going over the top of my mom's shoulder to get that candle to come out because we were hungry. We wanted to eat some cake. So, so anyways, we'd go inside then, and we would, we would stand around the piano, and we'd sing Christmas songs together with our friends and our neighbors and family who were, who were there for the evening. And, and we'd sing songs uh, like, you know, the, 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 the fun Christmas songs you sing. And, and, uh, and, and, and so we thought it would be cool to, to do this, um, to invite you into our little living room and maybe come into your living room and sing some Christmas songs with you wherever you are. So if you would, um, why don't you just cozy up with your hot cocoa and, and put on your slippers and maybe sing along with us some of these familiar Christmas songs. And um, we know that most people, they only know like one verse of a Christmas song. And after that, it's kind of a wash. So just sing as much as you know, and we'll, we'll do it together. This is Rudolph the Red Nose Rainier. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer had a very shiny nose. Yet if you ever saw him, you would even say close. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. But they never been for Rudolph, shown in any reindeer games. Therefore, for a Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, come on and cut my sleigh tonight. Then how the reindeer loved him, how's the shout and how it's clear. Rudolph, the red nose reindeer, you'll go down in his story. Here's 
another one called Go Tell on the Mountain. While shepherds kept their watching, for silent flocks by night, they all throughout the heavens, they shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, for the hills and everywhere. Go tell it. sound good wherever you are. So we would, we would uh, we'd finish eating our cake and finish singing those fun songs. Then we'd put on our coats and we'd go head down to the middle of town to our little small church in, in the center of town. And we would, we would sing some other Christmas songs at a Christmas Eve service. Songs like Hark the Herald Angels Sing and, and songs like Silent Night. And so why don't you travel there with us too as we keep singing together. Here we go. Sing glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy, my own God and sinners reconciled. Joyful are ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the new born King. Hail the heaven born Prince of Peace, hail the Son. Righteousness, light and light to all he brings, prison with healing years. Might he lay his glory by for that man no more.
Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night. Shepherds watch our keeping. This is, this is the Christ our King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Yes, test to bring him praise and love, the Son of Mary. The Son of God All I see in such pain a state i 
This is our uh, this is our favorite tour to do every year. is the Christmas tour. It's just a, and I think this is the only tour we've done this year. It's the Christmas tour, and uh, and so glad to get to, the chance to to play and to to be around some people, even if it's virtually, and to get to bring this message to your to your home. And um, man, I think it's such a timely message for this season. And uh, and so. Um, we, we, we love the Christmas season. I've said that a million times before, and I think, um, you know, I, I think I, I enjoy it even more now that I'm a dad. I've been a dad for over eight years now. I have, I have two little boys at home. They're not so little anymore. They're growing up, but they're eight and four, and, uh, and man, I, I see so much of them. In, in, I see so much of myself in them, and, uh, and so as they get excited as we're out on this, you know, out on a tour and doing, you know, some Christmas events, uh, I think... Um, getting home for Christmas is so exciting for me um, because I get to see them just kind of growing with excitement. And uh, it reminds me of when I was a kid. Actually, my oldest son is eight now, and it, it reminds me of a specific Christmas uh, where I, 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 was, uh, I was really, really excited because I, 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 my, my brother and I had been both asking for this specific thing that Christmas, and it was this electric train set. And uh, we, we hadn't ever had anything like it. So we'd seen it in the catalog. We'd seen it in the commercials. We, we'd asked and pleaded and begged and whatever else, bargained for this thing for probably over a year. And, uh, and sure enough, Christmas came, and we came running down the stairs. And, and that morning, we saw this, this big box that looked like it could be that, that electric train. And, uh, and so we tore, op- we tore it open, and, and sure enough, that's what it was. And so we... We, uh, we were so excited because we treasured this thing before we even had it. We, we knew this is what would make our lives just complete. And, uh, and so anyways, we, we spent the whole Christmas Day putting this thing together. And this thing was elaborate. It had all these, you know, really nice train cars and, and these tracks that you had to kind of construct. And so we spent most of the day uh, doing that. And, uh, and so once we finally got it complete, it was, it was ready to go. And we, we got the train set on that track and we were ready to push the lever forward and see this thing go and, and, and put it in action, and, and, and we did it, and it would go make it about two inches on the track, and then it would fall off, and, and so we tried it again, and it would do the same thing over and over, and, and we got kind of uh, disinterested pretty fast, 
in this thing that was going to change our lives, you know, this little electric train. And, uh, and so what ended up happening is we got home from Christmas that year from our grandparents, and that train ended up living in a shoebox in the basement of my parents' house in a closet where it still is today. And uh, so as we approach Christmas this year and every year, my wife and I always ask the question, what are we, we going to get our kids for Christmas? Because I think it's good to get our, give, give our kids gifts for Christmas. Um, but at the same time, how are we teaching them what, what's important and, uh, and what we ought to treasure? And, uh, and so, and, and that's causes another question in, in, in my own mind, in my own heart, is like, what do I treasure? I think, if I'm honest with you, I think 2020 has helped me kind of dig into that question a little bit more. It's like, what, what do I really treasure? Do I treasure comfort? Do I treasure things? Or do I treasure something else? And so, about a year ago, we, uh, me and, and our, uh, Thad, our guitar player, we had the, uh, the privilege to travel to another country, a place called Nicaragua. And, uh, and we got to see some people who were putting their treasure in things that wasn't stuff. And it was a group called Compassion International. And International. You may have heard of them before. Uh, but we went over with them to see kind of what they were doing in Nicaragua. And they're doing it everywhere. Uh, but we saw firsthand uh, what happens when you place your treasure in something that's not just stuff, but that's actually a person's life. And so I can, I can honestly say I, I've been overseas before. I've been around kids in poverty before, uh, but something about being uh, in front of a little girl named Margarita, for, for example, one, one girl that we met who had absolutely nothing, uh, but was so content. She lived in this small little house with her grandmother who, couldn't, who was blind, and, and yet she had this hope because she had the hope of Jesus, because compassion had shown her that. They'd, they were rescuing her out of poverty by not just feeding her, but they were, they're feeding her three nutritional meals a day. They're, they're giving her medical assistance and coverage. They're, 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 they're educating these kids so that they don't just, like, get fed but then don't have a way out. But they're, they're growing in their knowledge to actually learn a trade and a skill to, to get out of poverty. And then they're, they're learning the gospel. They're being taught the gospel. And I think about my own kids. When I looked into Margarita's eyes, I think, man, my my. My sons will, will never have to experience what she has experienced in her life. And yet, um, I, I, I realized that day that what, what we ought to place most value in, what we ought to treasure is, is people. And so, so we're on board. We're on board with what Compassion does, and it's because it's effective. It works. They've been around a long time. And uh, you can't do that by coincidence. And uh, Compassion partners with local churches in, in the local area. So they're not just going in and just creating a program, but they're meeting with people that are already established in those communities that know the area, that know the kids, that know the families, and they're using that as a, as a hub and a resource to, to reach these kids and really, really change their lives. And so this Christmas season, this Christmas tour, we're partnering with Compassion International to rescue as many kids out of poverty in the name of Jesus as we can. And we want your help. And so here, here's as simple as, it, as I can make it to you. If, if you feel led or called to do this, if you feel like, man, I, I've sat on the sideline long enough. I, I know this 2020 has been hard for me, but it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm realizing that, you know, maybe my comforts aren't the most important thing, but, but people all around the world are, are, are struggling. And maybe I have the resources to help one person. And maybe some of you have the resources to help two kids. There's a girl here that, has, sits on my piano most nights. Not the same girl, but different kids. And this one's name is Cynthia. And uh, she's been waiting for a sponsor for over a year. And, uh, and you can make a difference for her and, and a ton of others. And so what we would like for you to do is if you could go to the link on this, on this uh, page right now, uh, either follow the text, text to the number on this page or go to the, the website that it lists. And, uh, and go and, and see what it would look like for you to spend a little over a dollar a day to change a kid's life forever. And I'll tell you, the first time my family sponsored a kid, it wasn't even me, and it wasn't my wife. We, we didn't raise our hands. I, I know for me personally, I always felt uncomfortable because I didn't really know if the Lord was asking me to do this, and I felt like, no, I'll, I'll make a difference in another way. And my son, who was seven years old at the time, raised his hand. And said, I, I want to sponsor a kid. And, and I was, we were so proud of him because he, he didn't have all the excuses that we did. And so tonight, wherever you are, 
just ask that you would take some inventory of those excuses. And are they really standing in the way tonight or not? And if they're not, or if they are, I just invite you to, to, to push through that and ask the Lord, what, what can I do to make a difference outside of my home this year and change a kid's life forever, for eternity, through compassion? And so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to play another song. And, and while I'm playing it, you can pause the video and go to those sites. You can get, if you're on your computer, you, you can open up another window and just do it while you're listening. And we're gonna, I'm going to play a song called Great Plans. It's, it's Jeremiah 29, 11 talks about the great plans he has for his children, plans to prosper us, plans for a hope and for a future. And that's not just for us. That's for all of his children. And so we're going to sing this over these kids that are waiting for a sponsor with the hope that you're going to actually take action and take a step and do it tonight as you're watching. And, and, uh, and we believe for lots of lives to be changed as a result of this. And so um, we're going to play that song. And then just, yeah, if you would, just I'm going to sing it over these kids just like we sing it over our own kids. And uh, you would just be encouraged by it tonight. I know you're tired of the darkness in your eyes. I've come to recognize So lay yourself down in the shelter of my tree and rest a while with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great plans I have for plans I have for you, great plans I have for you, prosper you will, I know you will, I know you will. I have for you. 
ำทำคาดหนูปองหินทุสีฟาราบะปำปำอาฟายน์เอสเคปสวีฟริงฟาราบะปำปำ That's where to care okay for a b a b a m f a m r a b a b a m f a m r a b a b a m f a m Song called Miracle. There's a light that comes in front of me. It helps the lame to walk and fly to see. It opens his and moves a fear away. You took me in when I had lost my way. Looking for miracles, looking to soothe my soul, looking to feel the soul in me. Looking at you, I know something so beautiful. You are the miracle in me. There is a hope that beats inside my heart. You change the world and burn from just a spark. Let us to fire and calm the raging sea. You can stay and lead us through the wandering. Looking for miracles, looking to soothe my soul, looking to feel the soul in me. Looking at you, I know something so beautiful. You are the
hands that can't hold on There is a power that lives inside of me He conquered death and took away the sting You're a This Christmas season finds us a rather bewildered human race. We neither have peace within nor peace without. And yet, my friends, a Christmas hope for peace and goodwill toward all men can no longer be dismissed as a kind of pious dream of some utopian hoper. And with this faith, we will be able to adjourn the counsels of despair and bring new light into the dark chambers of pessimism with this faith, we will be able to speed up the day when there will be peace on earth and goodwill toward men. It will be a glorious day. The morning stars will sing together and the sons of God will shout for joy. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let her receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. In heaven, in nature, sing. In heaven, in nature, sing.
and there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will for you. Angels we have heard high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. You hear the mountains in reply, you hear calling their joyous strains. chances left to sing along so why don't you sing it out with us we'll sing Gloria and you sing from wherever you are sing it as loud as you can here we go What a fun night it's been to spend with you tonight, or wherever you're watching, whenever you're watching. It's uh, hopefully we've 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 brought in a little of the Cloverton Christmas spirit to your to your living room, and, and uh, in the midst of a a, a year that's just kind of chaotic and crazy and noisy, our hope in tonight is that you've had a moment to just be still and just recognize the the hope of the world. It's come on Christmas two thousand years ago as a baby. The hope of the world that's greater than the next stimulus check or whoever's in the White House or, what, or whatever your, your, your team is, maybe winning the Super Bowl this year, what, whatever it looks like for you, that we, we recognize the hope of the world is in Jesus who came as a baby to save us all. 
And uh, that's what we celebrate this year. And so in your moments of chaos and madness, as the season comes quickly and floats by quicker than we're used to, I just think I invite you to come and adore the newborn king, just like the shepherds left their fields that night, because they knew something big was happening, that they would come to the manger to worship the king. In the midst of the grief that some of you might be in right now, because I know it's hard, Christmas time is, is different for everybody, that in the midst of that hurt and that heartache and that loss, that you would recognize that there's a, a greater good that's, that we could put our hope in, that you would just come and adore the baby who came to save us and wipe every tear from every eye. And so with that, we want to just wish you a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for being with us for this fun little Christmas caravan, Carol, and, and uh, we hope to see you down the road really soon. Merry Christmas, everybody, and Happy New Year.
Christmas bells I hear those Christmas bells Bringing the first snow well Out in the street Christmas, it doesn't feel like Christmas, and I'm with you.